Hey guys, in this series, I'll be teaching you how to go from being a complete Figma noob to being a complete professional at it. What is Figma to begin with? Well, Figma is basically a UI design tool or a web design tool where you can create websites, you can create UI designs, you can do UX designs, and you can do a lot of these things. And there's like a lot of flexibility. You can even design custom icons, you can de design SVGs, and you can have prototyping as well, which is really advanced. So now, how do, you, how do you even get started with Figma? Well, first of all, you have to go to the Figma downloads page, figma.com slash downloads, and you can download the desktop app or you can download the Windows app. You can also go ahead and log in or you can sign up and that's gonna run Figma directly in the browser, at least from my understanding. But I would still suggest you to download the Mac OS app or the Windows app and then use it as an application instead of using it in the browser. So how to get started and what are some of the things that you actually need to know about well once you have figma actually installed you're going to go to the home screen and then by going to the top right you can create a design file and once you have a design file you're going to have a file like this obviously you're not going to have any content inside of it and that's basically what you're going to have uh, so just looking at some of the stuff that's already there so let's just have a look at like what's there um, so you can see on the left we have layers and we have assets so these are basically going to be any objects that you add any text that you add any images that you add are gonna appear here um, and obviously you can separate or organize things into multiple pages so i can say page two i can say page three so on and so forth and i can do different things on them so that's a general overview we're gonna get to the assets part a bit later in the course but in this course i'm just going to basically be giving an overview of what this whole thing is so i've mentioned what's what exists on the on the left side of figma on the right side we basically have a properties panel you can consider it a properties panel anytime you select anything for example if i'm selecting this particular frame and we'll get to what a frame is you're you're going to get some options so you're, you're going to see the width and the height you're going to see the x positioning of this frame the y positioning you're going to get some alignment options you're going to get uh, an auto layout option you're going to get the layout grid you're going to get uh, you're going to be uh, allowed to apply a fill to it a stroke to it and some e some effects to it we're not going to go through all of these things yet so let's just go step by step and talk about what we see directly at the top well primarily we have um on the first icon we have some of the larger options list and you can see all of these options here but even before that i'm just going to go to some of the other buttons that we have beside the the main menu so on the beside the main menu we have some of the move tools so imagine you create a rectangle and you can create a rectangle by pressing r similar to the first initial of the rectangle and let's say if i want to move this rectangle around i can move it by by having this particular tool selected so anytime let's say you create anything let's say i create a rectangle by pressing r it's automatically gonna revert back to the move tool so you don't have to keep on pressing v so in order to select the move tool you have to press v and that's how you select the move tool but by by default the move tool is always going to be selected anytime you interact with one tool and it's just going to revert back to the move tool so by with the move tool you can click on any object and then you can click around and then you can you can have your click pressed and you can just move objects around you can resize them by grabbing the edges for example i can resize it horizontally i can resize it vertically by doing this and i can resize it in both dimensions by pressing by you by going to some of the corners of that object one of the other options that we have uh, in this particular moving tools is the scale option you can use the scale option by pressing k and what the scale option does is it actually proportion proportionately scales the object if you grab it by any of the edges so that's really important again if you want to resize anything proportionately you're going to use the scale tool you can also resize uh, a single object proportionally proportionately by uh, using the move tool and then let's say if i press shift and then drag it as you can see it's being resized proportionately and it keeps its proportions intact so those are a few things that you need to know about like the move tool and the scale tool coming to the frame tool you can basically access the frame tool by pressing a you can consider uh, the shortcut a to be an artboard sort of a thing and this is basically uh, what you use to start designing and start creating things so for example i press a to select this 
frame tool. And once I do that, I'm gonna get a bunch of options here in the properties or in the design panel. You can also consider it a properties panel and it's gonna ask me, hey, what type of a frame do you actually, or what type of an artboard do you want to create? Do you want to create a desktop frame or an artboard? Do you wanna create, create a MacBook? sort of a frame like what size should it be and I can choose to uh, create a frame that's for desktops and as you can see the size obviously is applied appropriately based on the size that was written here or I can let's say decide to create a manual frame by just clicking and dragging it around similar to how I did it with the rectangle and I can obviously give it a width of my choice and a height of my choice and yeah, that, that's something that I can do. We also have the scale tool, but I'm gonna ignore that because we, sorry, the slice tool, but I'm gonna ignore that because we don't usually use it uh, when we're designing websites and designing applications because uh, Figma already allows you to actually export things really easily. And we used to do a lot of slicing in Photoshop, but I don't think we need to do them here as uh, regularly or as consistently as we used to. So some of the other options we have, well, in the objects panel, you can consider this the objects panel. We have a bunch of objects like rectangle. You can press R to access the rectangle and you can create like rectangles. And if you wanna, again, create a square, you can press shift to have it, uh, to have the width and height the same. Similarly, you can create a line. You can create a line by pressing the L key and you can create a line of however width you want. And if you again want it to be a straight line, you can press shift and that's gonna create a straight line. And if you, let's say, move your mouse around, it's gonna uh, rotate itself in 45 degrees intervals. So that's one thing about the line tool. Similarly, with the line tool, you have the arrow tool, uh, which is actually gonna create a line with an arrow attached to it. So it created a line, it has some uh, stroke width, so I can create, I can make it 10 if I just wanna make it bigger. I can also give an arrow on the left side of it. I can change the arrow style as well. Uh, I can also, yeah, just make it round and do a lot of fancy stuff with it. On the other end, we have the polygon tool. So the polygon tool can be used to create um, polygons and basically you can have polygons with different uh, sizes. So let's say if I create a particular size of a polygon, I can change the size by going here and I can change it to, let's say four sides, six sides, 10 sides, however many sides I want. Similarly, you can create a star by going to the star one, you can create a star like this. And similarly, you can uh, you can change the amount of sides that the star is gonna have. And you can also change uh, some of the some of the structure of the star. So for example, if I don't want it to be that thin, I can actually make it slightly thicker by going here and I can make it thinner if I want uh, in the in the design panel as well. So that's something that you wanna know about like the, rec uh, the, the objects tool. You can also use the place image, uh, which I'm gonna to get to. So for example, if you have a rectangle and let's say you have an image, I'm gonna, let's say, take a screenshot of my screen here. And I, as you can see, there's a screenshot here and I'm gonna choose uh, the place image tool. I'm I'm gonna choose it. I'm gonna go to my desktop where the image that I just took a screenshot of is, and I'm just gonna select this. And as you can see, it's gonna allow me to select the image and I can decide where I wanna place it. I can place it on the rectangle. And as you can see, the image is added as a fill to that particular rectangle. And I can obviously press Command Z to go back and revert some of the things that I've done. So as you can see, you can use Command Z to go back and you can use Command Shift Z to go forward in history. Command Z to go backwards, Command Shift Z to go forwards. And you can substitute Command with Control if you're on Windows. So now, some of the other tools that we have. Well, we have the pen tool and similar to Photoshop, you can use the pen tool to create like diverse shapes and SVGs and different sort of effects. So for example, if I wanted to create a graph, a line graph or something, I'm gonna, let's say, do something like this. I'm gonna say, okay, it's gonna look something like this. And yeah, it's gonna be like this. So imagine like this is a line graph. And now I'm basically gonna use this uh, bend tool and I can go and I can bend the edges. So I'm gonna bend these edges and yeah, here's a line graph and then you can drag and organize these things by pressing the shift key to be in a straight line just to give this particular line graph a bit more structure. So I'm gonna go and grab the edges, press shift, 
and then or just organize them a bit and I'm going to do the same here, same one here. So obviously this line graph is particularly unbalanced because some uh, op some points have larger space between them. So when you're ideally designing a line graph, you want to preserve the space between these points and keep them pretty consistent just for it to look good. But that's what you can do with the pen tool. There are other fancy things that you can do with the pen tool, like create, let's say, custom shapes. So for example, if I want to create like a file icon, I can go ahead and I can... Uh, create a rectangle so here you have the rectangle you didn't really have to do it with the pen tool but even if I did it you can do it like this and once once this particular uh, vector is selected I can go ahead and I can change the radius of it by going to the top right uh, multiple lines in there as well with the pen tool so I'm gonna click on one end and I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna move it to the other end and I can similarly duplicate this line by pressing the option key and just dragging this particular line below. The option key actually duplicates the object that you have selected, or let's say the object that you're actually, yeah, the object that you have selected and you can do that. And I can drag it once again. And yeah, so you have some lines here and you have a file uh, icon created. Similarly, you can create like very, you can create like di di a diverse set of icons with the pen tool and we can definitely get to the power of the pen tool in a separate video. So what other things can you do in Figma? Well, you can use the text tool to actually write some text. So I'm going to press the T key. You can press, you can select the text tool by pressing the T key and you can click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is, this is the text tool. And I can configure the font family by going to the, by going to the left. I can obviously type the font that I want. For example, I want Helvetica new. I'm going to choose that. I can go ahead and choose the weight of this particular tool. I can obviously configure the line height. So if I have the line height here, next line, I can obviously configure that as well. I can make it 100 and I can choose the spacing between the uh, characters as well. And obviously there are other fancy things that you can do. Um, for example, you can have indent for the paragraph, how indented it is on the left. You can have bullets. You can have numbering, you can have underline, strike through, a lot of fancy things, obviously alignment as well. So those are things that you actually can do with the pen tool. Uh, one other major thing that I perhaps did not highlight in the beginning is this hand tool. So with the hand tool, you can move around the uh, around the actual canvas and you can select the, the move tool or the hand tool, sorry by pressing the H key or pressing the space key. So you can obviously select the hand tool by pressing the H key and then you can move it around and then you can press H again, sorry, V again to actually select the move tool. But a better way of doing it is actually to press the space key and you're gonna get this hand and you can move things around. And once you're satisfied with the position you're on, you can let go uh, of the space key. And that's basically some of the major tools that you have here. Now, let's say if I were to design a mobile application like just the structure of it uh, how would i go about doing that well i would first of all press the a key to select the frame i'm going to go to the phone tab i'm going to say i want to design for iphone 8 let's say i'm going to go and press the oval key to let's say place the place an image here that's going to be the logo perhaps i'm going to press the text key to let's say have some text in there perhaps like i don't know login and then sign up probably so i'm just going to reduce this text a bit i'm going to make it 16 i'm going to make it regular so we have the login text here i'm also going to uh, make the zero the spacing so we have login here then i'm going to press the alt key and then drag it here as well and again when you press the alt key you also have to press the shift key because if you don't press the shift key you can uh, obviously mess mess up with the uh, with the vertical alignment of it. So if you press shift and if you, let's say I'm moving it up and down, it's still going to stay in the same line. So I'm going to say sign up and yeah, that's how you create a header. And similarly, if you want to have, let's say cards or anything, I'm going to create you, I'm going to press a again and I'm going to drag uh, and create like a rectangle using the frame. And obviously you can do that with the rectangle as well, but I'm going to definitely go into other videos describing why creating these layouts with frames is much is so much better and then i can let's say go and give this particular card a fill uh, let's say something like this and i can have some 
images in there so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to place this particular rectangle oh sorry oval in there as well i'm going to say um for example let's say i'm creating a medical application i'm going to say doctor one i'm going to give uh, i'm going to place it at the top i'm going to drag this doctor one at the bottom as well i'm going to say th it's this is going to be his occupation and i can reduce the font size by pressing the command shift and the uh and the the brackets and the edged brackets that we have so i'm going to press command shift and the left bracket key and it's going to reduce the font and by left bracket key i mean the one that's right beside the m key and i can also reduce the opacity of some text or any object that i've selected using the numbers at the top of your keyboard so if i press 6 it's automatically going to give it a 60 percent opacity and similarly i can create some other text and i can add it in here as well so as you can see one benefit of using the frame tool is so let me just type something so this is some text that i've just added for doctor one so let's say this is some text i have added in that in this particular card and i can obviously resize um, the container of it and i can resize this card as well so one great thing that you can see about the frame that you wouldn't get with a rectangle a frame actually contains the element that you add inside of it so all of these elements are now added to this particular frame and i can just press the option key again to actually drag this particular um, doctor card and i'm just gonna leave it here and as you can see we have two cards now now if i want to create another card or duplicate this card again i can obviously use the option key to actually drag it again or i can press command d and what command d is going to do it's going to duplicate the selection that you have and it's obviously also going to do the positioning automatically that you just uh, did above so that's how you go ahead that's how you would go ahead and create that simple application if you want and obviously we're going to go into much more uh, than just creating these basic applications we're going to create really, really beautiful ones so this is one application that i created for my dribble profile and we're going to create much more awesome applications like that around uh, the around some of the later portions of this course so do stick around and again i just want to say don't forget to subscribe because again subscribing is going to help me again get an idea of what you guys want do mention uh, in the comments do like the video if you like it and do mention if you want to see anything else specifically in the video you want any particular tool covered and if i'm going too fast definitely let me know or if i'm going too so slow then do let me know as well so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video and we'll talk about some of the other more important concepts. And yeah, I'll see you then.